All right, welcome to this lecture. And this lecture's topic is the stone check compactification. And before that, in, we've done one point compactification of a space, right? And now let's do something more than that. We're gonna do some other compactifications, but recall that we say a compactification of a space X is a compact Hausdorff space such that it contains X as a subspace. And the closure of x is equal to y, okay? And two compactifications are said to be equivalent if there's a homeomorphism between them, such that this map um, restricted on x is the identity map, okay? Identity map on x. So what you can think about is that you have x and you have a compactification y1 and you have x compactification y2 and then you have a h such that on x is the identity map okay so if x has a compactification then x is a subspace of a compact Hausdorff space and we know that compact Hausdorff space is a normal space a normal space is a completely regular space right so a subspace of a completely regular space it is also completely regular and conversely, if x is completely regular, recall that we can embed x into a subspace of 0, 1 to the power of j for some j, index at j. And because this is compact Hausdorff, so it is also compact Hausdorff, arbitrary product, right? Arbitrary product of compact is also compact, and <coughs> Hausdorffness is also like behaves well under product. And this embedding indeed gives a compactification of x, okay? So this embedding, like we embed w as a subspace of some 0, 1 to the j, and this embedding gives a compactification of x. And this is precisely the, the, the statement. So given a space, an embedding of x into a compact Hausdorff space z, then we have there exists a compactification such that there is an embedding h of y into z such that restricted on x is equal to h and this compactification is unique up to equivalence so this compactification is called a compactification induced by h okay so our goal is to prove that there exists a space such that there's a compactification of x and to prove to be to start First, we let x not denote h of x, the subspace of z, okay? And we let y not denote x not closure in z, which is a closed subspace of a compact Hausdorff space z. So closed subspace is a compact space, it is compact, right? And subspace of a Hausdorff space is Hausdorff, so y not is indeed a compactification of x not. So we first we have a compactification of x not we construct y. To construct y, we pick a as y not delete by uh, delete x not. Okay. Let me just erase this first. Um, we define a as x not closure minus x not. Okay. So, and then we let y denote as x union with a. Okay. And we again define a mapping from y to y not. So y is this to y not such that hx is equal to load hx and ha is equal to a. If x is x, if a is a. And first we have that h is bijective. <coughs> okay. So this definition shows that um, h is bijective. And the proof is not really hard, which is outlined here. You can pause and take a look. And then we topologize y. To topologize y, we define a set is open in y if only if h of u is open in y. Okay? And this claim states that it is a valid topology. It is indeed a topology. And the proof is just a couple of lines. And we have a third claim after that is that this h is a homeomorphism. So first, by definition, right, 
for from this definition, we see that it is an open map, right? It is a bijective open map, and also it is continuous, right? For v open and y not, right? H is from y not to uh sorry, h is from y to y not. So for v open and y not, v is equal to this, right? Right, so this is open, right? Which means that this is open. Th this is open and y not, which means that this is open and y. So this is open and y. So if v is open and y not, then this is open and y. So it's just continuous, which shows that it is a homeomorphism. Okay, now f another claim is that given the origin, so we have x as a space, right? given originally a topology and we consider another topology on x which is the subspace topology on x inherited from the space y and these topologies are the same <coughs> which means that x is a subspace of y okay so to prove this claim first let u open an x right with this t then by definition right because each H u is equal to low H u because u is open in x, right? It's open in x naught because H u is a homeomorphism. Little h is a homeomorphism, right? So H u is equal to something like this, where this is open and why not? Well, if this is open and why not, now we just apply pre-image, right? We pre like we have this, right? So we just apply pre-image on both sides which means that we can split these two right and this becomes x and this is open and y by definition when v is open and y not so this is open and y so yep exactly this is an open and the substitute topology and conversely right conversely if you're open this right we have something that looks like this right then h of u will be equal to this intersect this, which is equal to um, this equality because h is bijective. H is bijective, okay? Injective or whatever, right? And uh, because v is open in y, so this is open in y naught, so blah 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 is open in x naught, right? And because u is a subset of x right this is definitely a subset of x right so we have this equality which means that we have <coughs> u is equal to h preimage of h under h of u where h of u is open in x naught okay so this is open in x naught Right, which by definition is just continuous, right? If this is open in x naught, then h the preimage under something is open in x, right? Okay, so now we have these claims. We have y is homeomorphic with y naught via the map h, right? And y naught is compact Hausdorff, so does y, because they're homeomorphic. And x is a subspace of y. So all we have to verify is this. So after this, to verify this is a bit tricky. So first, the uh, inverse image, not sorry, the inverse function <coughs> is continuous. Thus, first we have this, and then we have this, right? And this is a closure of z naught and, and z, right? Which is... Oh, sorry. And we have actually this is equality, right? Should be equality here, right? Because, right? And if we just intersect, why not, right? Then this is will be the closure of x naught and y naught, right? The closure of x naught and y naught, and because this is a continuous function from y not to y so we have to like work with the space right so 
from here, we have this, right? The closure. So this is the, this, and which is this. So y is a subset of x closure, right? And x closure of the y trivially. <coughs> Thus, we have that y is a compactification of x. Okay, so from here, and h is, if, if you just expand the range, is also continuous, right, which is embedding. Now to show equivalence for of two compactifications, right, since h i is embedding, right, to show that they're equivalent, first we have this. We have this equality. So the proof is not hard, right, it is here, just take a look. And thus, we, thus, they are homeomorphisms, right? Which means that we can define this function. It is also a homeomorphism. And with this claim, we have that they are equivalent, ultimately, right? And this is everything for lambda. And a basic problem of studying compactification is that if y is a compactification of x, when can a continuous real value function defined on x that extends continuously on y? So first, let us recall that this embedding theorem, uh, which is in the horizontal metrization theorem lecture. Okay, and here's the important theorem. Given a completely regular space, then there exists a compactification such that for any real value bounded, it must be continuous. Continuous, let me just add a condition. Continuous, bounded, real valued. It can extend uniquely, uniquely to a continuous mapping from Y, from this compactification to R. And the proof, so let's just consider the collection of all bounded real value continuous function on X. Okay, so this is the collection of all bounded function. Now for each alpha, we we bound this i alpha, right? We bound it all the ranges, and we define the function h by the component wise, defined component wise, because x is completely regular, so this actually satisfies the hypothesis, right? Because they're bounded, right? They're bounded and right. If we if you just check, right, we can just apply the theorem, so which shows that H is an embedding. And Petichnov, this is compact. And it's also Hausdorff. So we can apply the lemma, let Y be the compactification to, uh, induced by H. So there's an embedding from Y to this such that this is true. Now, for each f beta, we want to show that it extends y, right? Uh, so we just consider the projection map, and we just compose with h, and we're done. It is continuous, and it's extension of f, of x, of f. Okay, so so we just just remember this theorem, such that it has a compactification such that any continuous bounded real value function can extend it uniquely to a continuous mapping from y to r, okay? And the uniqueness followed by this lemma, okay? And this lemma is really not hard. It's just by an easy contradiction, okay? And another theorem, we just uh, extend to more general cases, is the real value is this map into a compact Hausdorff space. So given x completely regular and y satisfy the theorem, theorem star, which is this theorem, theorem star, then even we're mapping to a compact Hausdorff space, we can still extend, okay? And uh, the idea of the theorem is really just because c is, um, Compact Hausdorff is normal, which is completely regular. So the basic idea is to embed C into this, right? 
embeds into this for some j. So we can just view c as a subset of this. And the rest just follows. Okay, the rest just follows. Just take a look. And uh, these two, y1, y2, if they all satisfy this, they're equivalent. Okay, so this finally comes to a definition for a complete variable space, paper power identification, such that this and this y as beta x is just called a stone check, check compactification of x, which is unique up to equivalence. So this finishes our uh, topics on compactifications. Okay, so uh, from next time, we're going to uh, move on to metrization theorems. So I'll see you guys next time.